give it the beans. Full bore. Happy Sunday, YouTube. Well, Sunday for me. I don't usually have Sundays off. At all. Ever. In fact, this is the first day I haven't had to go to work somewhere, ooh, about three weeks. So, as you can see, the yard looks rough. I would much rather be heading back that way and doing an upcoming project and some updates on DF1 or maybe working on seasonal maintenance for DF2, but instead, where'd it go? I need to dig the lawnmower out, cut the grass, it's only 98 degrees, but it's the one day I have to do it, so we'll get that done, and then maybe later today, we'll dive into some fun stuff. Mm, I almost feel bad for not having created more content with this thing yet, but timing, schedules, weather, all sorts of things, they all happen. There isn't a lot that this thing needs to have done as far as repair and maintenance. I mean, yeah, seat cover, ugh, poopy, it's crap. But, aside from busting out a can of that satin clear every now and again to sort of keep the uh, metal termites away, you know, I do need to get a battery for it. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do... I haven't really had a chance to ride it more than about 10 miles this year. So I have some things I'm going to check over, uh, sort of as a pre-ride type of uh, inspection. Number one, the throttle does return, so that's good. Number two, alright, so yeah, we could stand to adjust the brakes, but it pulls in tight right there and that's bound up shoes against drums, so that's okay. We'll check the rear brakes. Oh, they're, they're, they're right on top of the pedal, so that's good. We're fine there. I've already checked tire pressure, so I know those are good, but you can see we have excellent tread on these tires, which were replaced just a year ago. I know for a fact the headlight works, and it you know goes up and down as you rev it, because that's what these do. Uh, right now, uh, we've got a loose screw here on the tail light, and right now we do not have a good battery in this, so all of our stopping and turning signals are done by hand. Therefore, we do not ride at night right now. Um, rear tire, she's golden. Let's get up underneath the butt bolster and see what we got here. Now, we know we have oil because the sight plug and I know you can't see down in there, but yes, I can see oil at the top of the tank. So we got plenty of oil for multiple tanks of fuel driving around. How does our fuel look? Uh, she's looked better, boys. Definitely looked better. But I'm thinking what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a quick and dirty video. I'm going to run some of this gas through here. And we are going to see if the local power sports joint may in fact have a 12N battery I can put in this and then this may actually see a trip to and from work who wants to see that do you I thought so so you want to take your vest before a ride all right number one straight up and down means the fuel is on number two you need ignition power Number three, you need the run switch on. Now, it's warm out. It's like 95, 96 degrees. I don't think we're gonna take more than a kick or two and no, absolutely no choke. Giving it no throttle. There we go. That's a cold start. Well, best laid plans. Nothing ever goes quite the way you expect it to. That's all right. Life's an adventure. Step one, take it for a ride. Step two, forget to bring your phone. Step three, also make sure you don't bring the faux pro because, you know, that would be useful. So, took a trip out to try and get a battery to go under that side. And 
Power Sports place. They're closed on Sunday, it turns out. Forgot it was Sunday, but you know what? They need to be able to ride their junk too. So, um, yeah, forgot my phone. Had to come back and get that. Now I discovered something along this ride. I have a clutch adjust adjustment issue. See all that? I should not have that much cable slop in my clutch. There's no adjustment up on this end or in here. All of the adjustment is down under the motor on the clutch rod with the cables. Now, hopefully, it's not a case of needing to replace the cable because they are known to wear out and get frayed and then stretch and then boink, then you have no way of clutching the vehicle. But uh, I'm gonna give it a few to cool off a little bit. I'm gonna try and get under it and inspect my clutch situation. But otherwise, she's running like a dream. <sighs> it makes me feel bad for not having ridden her more last summer or yet this season. Although, I do have a minor excuse for this season. The first month of really good riding was filled with cicadas. You don't want to get hit with those. I'm going to do a little comparison on the basket case parts bike here. Let's take a look at... Alright. So, yeah, that, that clutch barrel in here that doesn't look all that different. It does have some sort of aftermarket cable in it, but that hole doesn't look too much worse than the hole on the uh, on DF2. So, nah, I'm not too worried about having to replace that lever. We just got to do a proper adjustment down under the floor on that thing. Man, it is hot out. So what do you think the chances of me opening this box and finding an eight millimeter box right off the bat is. Can you see it? Boom. Yep, that's an eight. All right, this is what we need. This should be all we need to do a quick and dirty clutch adjustment. Let's see if we can adjust that up. All righty, now as we lay ourselves down ever so comfortably on the pavement on this, well, you know, 95 degree day, We'll loosen that little lock nut. Man, it's tough to see. It's so bright out. I'm having contrast issues. Alright, little lock nut's loose. And then, we'll see if we can't back this adjuster out just a smidge. So as to take up some of the cable length that has stretched over the last, I don't know, five or six thousand miles. We've got plenty of adjustment left here. You can also adjust it uh, right here, but that's much easier to do if you have a bike lift or a table. In reality, this is fine. It accomplishes the same thing. Just in a much finer increment. I bet this is mesmerizing, isn't it? All right, well, from this point, I'm going to go up and I'll check free play on the handle and see what we get. Still a fair amount. Let's see how much more we can pull that in. I don't personally mind riding with free play on it. It's just what happens is if the cable doesn't pull this lever far enough, you don't get complete disengagement of the clutch as you come to a stop and it drags on your clutch plates. And the cork, you know, the corks and the steels in there, because yes, they use actual cork in these things. And, um, it wears them out. Now, I don't do a whole lot of stop and go riding. Most of mine is back and forth and third and fourth gear, twisty back roads. So. I hate to say it, I'm actually considering 
if the weather looks okay for tomorrow to take this thing to work. Because why not? Much improved. We'll give it another turn or two. This is probably the most boring thing you've ever seen, isn't it? Either that, or I'm having a musty one type moment, and it's pure genius. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead. And turn my lock nut back down to where in there. And then I'll go ahead and give it a few cranks to snug it down. So that way we don't lose our adjustment. Also, you don't need to do it King Kong torque tight. There you go, because soft aluminum case. But Oh, that's funny. Did this thing stop? No, it's still recording. Okay, whew. I thought the button said stop. All right, let's get ready to uh, see if we can't hook up the faux pro. Well, I guess that's what I get for buying a cheap camera at Walmart. Anyway, the faux pro, it didn't do anything for me. It wouldn't stay on, it shut itself off, whatever. Here's what we got going on. I got about four miles down the road, and yep, we completely popped the clutch cable. Not the end of the world. We'll just have to lift the headset console, pull the old inner cable out of it, yoink, and then thread the new cable down to the bottom to where we were doing some adjusting earlier. Now, we gotta let this thing cool off, and I just hope I have one of those cables in my stash. It's the stash. Is, which one is it? This, this guy, I don't remember what this one is. There's a couple of inners. I'm willing to bet, I'm willing to bet one of these two guys will do just fine. What other stuff do I have down in here? Some box of screws, it's empty. Looks like I probably have... A multitude of different doodads, choke and or throttle cables, different brake cables. All right, we should be good to go. I just need to figure out which uh, inner I need to lube up and run down the sleeve and readjust in the way that it likes to be adjusted. Hmm, adventures. Maybe someday I'll be able to actually get a writing video for you because, you know, my camera's crap. Alright, we're armed. Screwdriver. 11. Oops. 8. 10. I bet you thought that's the one that was going to try to run away. Oh. And we've got a cable. Let's go find some lube and start taking things apart. Uh, we want to start by pulling out those headset screws. You got some on both sides. There's usually some up in the front half as well. Up in the front half of it, if I remember correctly. And then we'll get that cover off. Next, we're going to undo this little guy right here so that we can get the whole clutch handle out and away. I don't know about a whole bunch of the other models, but at least on the P-Series, you usually have a locking nut on the back of them. I'm trying to remember on the older versions whether they do or not. And fun fact, because Piaggio was originally an aircraft company. They use these crazy capped, machined screws. I love them. They're so... 1940s precision but keep an eye on something here you'll notice right in here focus for me come on please eh, there you go right in here you've got little washer stacks for top and bottom right in there and there that helps 
prevent up-down play once you have this thing cinched down and in place. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the lever out and figure out just where the cable broke. All right, now the mystery is deepening. This just doesn't want to come out. Well, maybe it does. Maybe it's because it broke down at the bottom end. Let's go take a look down below decks. All right, let's see. Brake lever. Where's the clutch stuff? Where'd the clutch stuff go? Oh, there it is. All right. So, you can see our outer for our clutch. And right there, that guy right there, that's our broken cable. So, yeah, she snapped right off the end and... There's our clutch lever. Right off the end. Alright, so we're gonna get to readjusting this back down to uh oh son of a you know what? We lost the entire adjuster assembly off the back of this. I can't fix this today. I'm gonna have to go looking for that in the road. Ain't that just something? Because that whole pinch bolt assembly, that went bye-bye, out the back of it. Oh, son of a... All right, she came loose. She didn't want to, but she totally did. That thing being all frayed out like that from having broken off, compared to that to a new one. Yeah. Most of the lube had dried up in here. This end being exposed to the world, the weather. I'm not surprised. Uh, I've got probably, personally, yeah, I've got over 5,000 miles, give or take, on that cable. So, that's what that is. Uh, now to go make a decision about whether we search for the bracket or just scrounge one. Well, that's not working out the way we wanted it to. Uh, yeah, went and dug a motor up down in the basement. There's clutch lever. Yeah, there's our clutch lever. Guess what? No bracketry. We're going to have to go try and rescue ours. All right, here's where we stand. That girl, yeah, no dice. Lost the part. Don't have a spare down in the basement, I don't think. Haven't been able to find one. So we're going to go on a rescue mission. Dumpster Fire 1, you are being enlisted to go on a search and rescue for a bracket four miles down the road. Think you can do it? Probably not. Ugh. Oh god, it's hot. But it smells pretty good. Mmm, leather. Well, look at that. Found the end of the cable and the barrel nut that you used to lock it in place. But the actual adjusting lever that allows it to pivot smoothly, no sign of that yet. But I'm actually kind of impressed that we found this. All right, I'm feeling better about this. Yeah, we're about that far from where we turned around and headed back. Well, I'm gonna declare that to be absolutely hilarious. I was able to find this. But no luck on the bracket. That could have come off at any number of points. I guess I'm going to slow roll the ride home and uh, see if something shows up in the road because that's where I found this. Now with a little lubrication in that tube there, a little bit of patience, I was able to get that to go all the way through nice and smooth. Plenty of lube juice always helps. Plus, it'll help displace moisture, which causes problems later in the future. Now we're going to get our clutch handle lined back up. We don't have to worry about refitting the barrel. Come on, focus. We don't have to worry about refitting the little lead barrel on the end of these cables, because these come fully encapsulated, and the, and the long end of it is soldered to help make installation easy, so that works out nice. So, so looking at this, these barrel nuts are a special kind of Italian. 
I mean, it's complicated in an unnecessary way, but it makes some sense. You have right here in the center of it, come on, focus, buddy. That's an 8 millimeter, but the actual bolt that goes down the middle of this guy, that thing is 7 millimeter. This is one of the few times you need something outside of 8, 10, 11, and 13 to work on this thing. Uh, but you can do it with a little pair of pliers as well. Uh, that's so you can put two different wrenches on there at once and tighten up, I guess. Let me see if I've got a 7 down in the basement. I almost forgot. The really important part of the barrel nuts is that they've got a machined little disc bushing type thing in the bottom of them so that the screw itself doesn't have to dig into the cable. It clamps it with a smooth flat surface. Now if you lose that, you can get away with, you know, making it work to get home, but tell me that's not kind of cool. Like I said, Italian, overthought. And you wonder why Ferraris and things are expensive. There we are. <laughs> oh, you little stinker. Now we're going to slide barrel nut. See, now that's the only problem with having tinned cables. Sometimes they're a little thick. them to fit on the first try it can be a little difficult we'll come back well there we go the end of a little adventure with DF2 didn't expect it to go that way but you know not everything always goes the way you want me I wanted to not be hot and sweaty but it is what it is but where is it oh well whatever I kind of kind of sort of got the faux pro to work on this thing. We'll see if I get anything useful out of it. I bet it's got weird noise in it because it's always got weird noise in it because it's a cheap piece of crap from Walmart. Anyway, it's been a long day. I'm gonna go walk the stupid dog, have a cold beverage, and uh, watch a little tube. See you later guys.